What's going on, Pokemon fans? Ashen Moore here with my Week 5 battle against Blazing Squid and the Toronto Totodiles. This is only a 9-week season, so we are on Week 5. That means we are at exactly the halfway point already. Currently in the standings, I'm sitting 2-2, two and two, so not the best. Blazing Squid is at 3-1. and one. We really need to win this battle in order to keep momentum up going into the last four games. It's especially important to win this coming off of last week. I need to be able to show both myself and the rest of the league that this was a kind of one-time mistake. So, I'm hoping to make this a competitive game and a good game, but I'm sure that Toronto Totodile is not going to make that easy for me. Blazing Squid has a couple of odd threats. He's got the Aurora Veil, Alolan Ninetales. That's a given. He's got the second best web setter. I'm going to say the best one's Araquanid. That's going to be something to watch out for. And then he's got Silvali. And a lot of people have been talking smack about Silvali lately. And I don't get it. No, he doesn't deserve to be in Tier 2 like he started out in the beginning of Gen 7 Draft League. But he also doesn't belong in Tier 4. He is an absolutely fantastic, versatile pivot. I mean, tailor-made to literally any team. So we have to decide what kind of Savali might he bring against us. How are we going to counter that? Of course, on top of that, he has a plethora of conventional threats. He has the Mega Charizard X. That is one of the most difficult offensive threats to deal with in this game right now. He's got the Torn T, the best momentum guy in the game. He's got Zydago, so he's got access to Thousand Arrows, the best move in the game. Honestly, when I was looking through this team, it's a very, very well thought out, well put together team. But what scares me the most are two other things that you wouldn't think would be the most scary. The first one being Bisharp. Wow, that thing has a great matchup against me. I very, very much expect him to bring that in the game. I have two Intimidators. Maybe I forget about Defiant. Uh, it seems like a good idea anyway. But even more horrifying than that is the prospect of having to deal with a defensive Lorantis and Slowking core. You know, you don't usually think about Slowking Regenerator, uh, but it's just as bad as Slowbro. In fact, in some ways, it's worse. So the first I idea that I have when working on a win condition is... What's going to be the most consistently effective threat against his entire team? If he sets a Roar Veil up with Alolan Ninetales, I may not have an opportunity to defog or brick break it before I need to apply offensive pressure. So, we're going to run Choice Banded Crobat. With Infiltrator, it simply ignores the Aurora Veil altogether, and he has a lot of Pokemon that are either weak to Brave Bird or just don't take it very well whatsoever. On a banned Crobat, obviously you're going to run U-Turn, and the last two slots are kind of open to play around with. Uh, I opted to go for Leech Life, because after some chip with Brave Bird, you can hit Leech Life against either of those two defensive mons, Lorantis or Slowking, so I thought that was a pretty good idea. And then Quick Attack in the last slot, which does a pretty good number to a Dragon Dance Charizard that's out of our speed tier, or to anything else he might have that's a Scarf that's faster than Crobat. Of course, to support Crobat, we're going to need rocks, and my best rocker is Mudsdale. So Mudsdale's going to be coming back, making it a third appearance. He's going to be carrying Heavy Slam and Earthquake as other coverage moves. The Heavy Slam will kill Alolan Ninetales through Aurora Veil 100% of the time. Roar is there to make sure that he doesn't actually get set up on, or that he can phase out a Charizard or a Bisharp that happen to get out of control. Speaking of which... I'm not bringing a coverage move for that Charizard before it Mega Evolves. I don't feel like I need to. I feel like I could just roar it out. Uh, otherwise, the Mudsdale can take any hit that the Alola Ninetales can do, even if it is Specs. Uh, however, it is going to take a lot of damage if we do Specs. I should be able to get rocks up against multiple different things, the Slow King if I have to, uh, but preferably maybe the Dawn Fan if he brings it, or maybe Silvali if he brings like Silvali Steel. Because he has Galvantula and access to webs, we do need a way to get rid of those. So, because Crobat is being taken up with an offensive role, we're going to be bringing Defog on Finny. I'm going to be running Nature's Madness for the first time here, because I feel like, especially against his team, it does a lot of work. And then combine that with Surf to actually pick a couple of things off, and I think it'll be fairly effective. Haze is there to make sure that we don't get set up on, or to pull Calm Mind Boost off of a Slow King if that's the route that he decides to go down. So we have offensive band Crobat, we have two defensive pivots that have specific roles. What are our last three slots going to look like? Well, it's going to be dedicated to a couple of utility things and then opening holes in the enemy team. Now, speaking of opening holes, Mega Kangaskhan, I'm going to be using it this week and I'm going to be using it in a way that most people use it. So I have not run it like this before. Uh, we're going to be running the power-up punch build. Return for maximum damage, 
fake out sucker punch that will allow us to deal with very very fast zard if we absolutely have to or if we end up in front of a four attacking torn t instead of it you turning out on us we can get some sucker punch damage potentially kill it fake out's also a good way to deal with scarf min Shao if he happens to go that route power up punch will help us deal with savali steel because i think if he brings savali it is going to be savali steel we're also going to be bringing a Scarf Curum. Now this matches up pretty well against Zygarde 10 and against Tornadus and against a couple of the other things on his team. Notably, it can threaten out the Lorantis and the Donphan, all of those with just Ice Beam. But what I find more interesting and more useful is the fact that Shadow Ball does fairly big numbers to Slowking, so that's another way we can get rid of that thing or at least lower its HP. Flash Cannon can get the Ninetales, Earth Power can get the Bisharp. The entire idea behind this particular Curum variant is that it could sweep the late game, but its purpose is to do as much damage early on as possible against his defensive core. If we have to completely throw this thing away for 50% damage on Slow King after it comes back in from Regenerator, I will do it. That's all I need it to do. In the very last slot, I'm going to be running a Zeriora. This Zeriora is mostly tech. For instance, it can switch in on the Galvantula and kill with Fire Punch. Uh, it has Knock Off to get rid of Rocky Helmets or to scout for them. Brick Break is there to get rid of the Aurora Veil. And then Plasma Fist is my only way to actually straight up Oko the Slow King. As well as doing a number on multiple other of his Mons. Overall, our main impediments to winning this game are going to be if he can put up webs, if he can put up Aurora Veil, and if he can defend those two things. We're going to have to prioritize clearing those out of the way. The other huge thing is just the Slow King. The Slow King utterly and completely terrifies me. I'm going to spend the early game getting as much information on it as possible and getting as much damage on it as possible. But if we can do those things, I think we have a pretty good shot at taking the W this week. So we're going to get into the battle and see how we do. In team preview, we see that he has not brought Savali and he's not brought Bisharp, which makes it a lot easier to predict what he's going to be doing uh, with his team. So as far as a lead goes, I felt like leading Curum. I thought his obvious lead was Donphan, maybe Ninetales, but I also thought maybe he might lead Charizard as a counter to Curum, which he actually ended up doing, I think is the worst possible uh, point we could be at. So my main switch into Charizard is, of course, the Tapu Fini. I'm going to switch out into that. Uh, he can take any hit the Charizard can do. It can get rid of a Dragon Dance if he wants to go for that, or a Swords Dance. Doesn't really matter to me. But he actually ends up switching out the Charizard himself, which tells me this is not his idea to counter the Curum. Uh, or at least he doesn't want to Mega Evolve just yet. He decides he switches into the Slowbro. I'm going to go ahead and go for a Nature's Madness on this thing. I think 50% is fine. I also thought he might switch out to Lorantis, and getting half damage on that is fine too. But he actually reveals the Future Sight, which I think is kind of interesting tech. I still don't know whether or not he's defensive or offensive, but we'll find out shortly. Uh... He's going to switch out. That's a given. So Nature's Madness, again, is just going to ensure we get 50% damage on something else. Unfortunately, it's both Regenerator Mons, but that is some damage on them. And so we're getting some progress against the Slow King. Uh, here, I think maybe he's going to stay in uh, or maybe go for a Z move. So why not go ahead and just hit Surf in an attempt to kill or get him as low as possible so he can't switch in on rocks later. He switches back into Slow King, though, which is smart. And we get hit with Future Sight. This tells us what his investment is. He is not necessarily offensively invested. It just does a crap ton of damage anyway. So I don't know necessarily what he's going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and go into my Zeriora. Because Zeriora will kill this thing. Doesn't matter what its build actually is. He's got to expect Plasma Fist is probably going to come out here. He doesn't necessarily have any way to counter that except for Donphan. If he wants to switch into that or the Lorantis, that's fine. They're going to get knockoffed or I'm going to get the item off of the Slow King. Either way, very, very high likelihood if he has a Rocky Helmet, I'm going to be getting that right now. Or at the very least, I'm going to be able to tell what the investment is on something else. And because of the team lineup that he's brought, I think this Lorantis is probably defensive, but he could be offensive Z move. So uh, this is going to give us some valuable intelligence. The knockoff actually reveals the leftovers on the Lorantis, and the damage reveals his investment is indeed defensive in nature. So here, I'm just going to go straight on into the Curum, expecting that he's probably going to go for a knockoff or maybe a grass move. I don't know. Uh, he, he also might have switched into the Dawn fan there. Uh, he is going to knock off Curum's Choice Scarf, and this is actually perfect because 
This is kind of a trap. I thought here he might expect the Ice Beam and go into Alola Ninetales to set Aurora Veil for free, but he does not end up doing that. Uh, so we end up Ice Beaming the Slow King. But I'm going to go ahead and just reveal the Shadow Ball, knowing that he's going to stay in and probably go for the future site. He does exactly that. I'm going to stay in. I'm going to continue to go for Shadow Balls until the Curum either dies or the Slow King dies. Uh, I have no reason to save the Curum. His whole purpose is to wear the Slow King down, which he's doing an absolute beautiful job of. Uh, yeah, there we see the Psy Shock. I was pretty sure he was going to slack off there or something, but he ends up switching out. Uh, preserving the Slow King, which is a smart idea, and switches into the Charizard. And Charizard's going to eat a pretty big number off of this Shadow Ball. Now, that turn, I did think about going for a different move, potentially, uh, but Shadow Ball did the best overall coverage to his team, and it would also guarantee a kill against the Slow King if he did stay in. But we are going to lose the Curum there. Not a big deal. I'm going to go straight into Crobat. That's my best answer to the Charizard. Anything he goes into is either going to die or it's going to take an absolute ton of damage. I believe Braybird does almost 50% to maximally defensive Dawn Fan. So here we go. Uh, we're going in on this Dawn Fan right now with the Brave Bird doing about half damage. And we see that he's actually leftovers. He is not Rocky Helmet on this Dawn Fan, which means he isn't Rocky Helmet on anything which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. I know he's going to go rocks here, most likely. He could have gone Stone Edge, I suppose, and, and that's really the main reason why I switched Crobat out. There's no reason to throw away a win condition. So I'm going to go into Mudsdale. It's the safe play, and I'm just going to go for Stealth Rocks of my own, uh, expecting that he is probably not going to stay in here. Uh, I'm, I'm really expecting maybe he goes into Slow King, but then again, I could Earthquake, so probably not. He goes into the Torn T. I can see that. The Storm T can't do anything to kill us. Uh, even if he's like ICMZ from Icy Wind, uh, there's nothing he can do. But we are going to see the animation here. The trainer flaps his wings, and that means this is Fly Z. And based off of the investment, we can tell uh, whether or not it is Hurricane, Supersonic Sky Strike, or whether it's Air Slash. And that's a pretty good, uh, good read there. Uh, so Mudsdale is going to absolutely eat that anime move. Uh, and take a ton of damage. But we've invested such that we're going to be able to take a hit like that. Now, because I've stayed in, I've gone for Heavy Slam, that's going to be a clear 2 HKO against this, or if he decided to swap, swap into the Alolan Ninetales instead of going for the Z move, uh, it was fine. I think, hey, it's Hurricane based off of the damage. There's no reason not to stay in. Just go for another Heavy Slam. Mudsdale's kind of done his job. He doesn't check Char X anymore. He doesn't check Alola Ninetales anymore. Stay in. 30% chance he's going to miss, which is pretty good. Uh, and just go for the Heavy Slam. Not a big deal. Now, he is going to be able to send the Ninetales in and Revenge Kill this. There's no way he can mess around going for Aurora Veil. He's seen Heavy Slam. Uh, so he's definitely going to go Blizzard here. Like I said... I don't need the Mudsdale anymore. Uh, it's not necessary. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to eat this Blizzard. Uh, and I'm going to use this opportunity to go into Mega Kangaskhan. Uh, I don't think that there's any reason not to. Again, the entire purpose of this team is to open up holes so that Crobat can fly through them. I don't think he can sacrifice his Ninetales at this point in the game if I hit return, so there's no reason why he wouldn't switch into one of his tanks. And this is where we're going to show the power up punch so we're going to be at plus two here with his dawn fan and his slow king at half hp this is a very very good position to be in yes we're going to get worn down a little bit by the hail but we can still take even after hail and ice shard a flare blitz from the charizard so i don't think that there's too big of a deal here i also think that because he didn't go for an attacking move on the nine tails it's highly likely that he's not specs on that thing which means he can't kill me with that either because of the chip damage that we got against the Lorantis earlier we also know that's not offensively invested and it's not a z move so it can't use like phytinium z or a super strong superpower to knock out the kangaskhan so obviously we're just going to keep clicking return until his team is entirely dead uh here he's going to go into the nine tails it's not that big of a deal uh, if he goes for an attacking move, that's fine. We'll kill the Nine Tails off, uh, or he'll just go for Aurora Veil and we'll kill the Nine Tails through Aurora Veil anyway. 
uh, it's not going to save the nine tails. So that is what he's going to do. He's going to go into the nine tails, use a roar veil. He's going to eat a return, and that is going to be another kill for the Kangaskhan. At this point, his best switch in is Lorantis. So that's what I'm expecting. Lorantis, superpower. But with his current investment and with Hale ending next turn, he is not quite going to be able to kill this Kangaskhan, or at least by my calculations, he won't. Uh, so we go for return. We hit two times, and he uses superpower. That is not quite going to do the job. Kangaskhan will hold on by around 2 to 3% HP. So. Uh, obviously, we know what our play is going to be. Hit return again. And Lorantis is going to go down. That's three kills for Mega Kangaskhan. It's like he was actually banned for a reason or something. I'm actually using him correctly this week. Goes into Charizard. This is a speed tie. He has one way to get back in the game at this point, and that is by clicking either Roost or Dragon Dance. That means there's no reason not to hit return here. Yes, I could hit Sucker Punch, but then I could theoretically lose. Even if he goes for an attacking move, it's not going to be a big deal. He has a Roar Veil up, but I have banned Crobat, and that is going to Oko both of the things that he has left. Uh, so he did actually go for Roost, I found out in the post game, but I did win the speed tie, and I ended up taking the Charizard down. Would have gone down anyway, not a big deal. So we are going to get this Slow King. Obviously, we're faster. The return is going to kill, and we're going to clean up pretty well here with the Mega Kangaskhan, actually. Uh, so, post-game, talking about what happened, uh, there's not a lot to say. Everything that we brought had a purpose, it fulfilled that purpose, and we ended up winning the game. Not necessarily with the Crobat like we planned, uh, but with the Wall Breaker we were using to kind of go with Crobat. I think part of that is because he lost the Tornadus Therian so early, but that is kind of what happens when you rely on Hurricane and not a more reliable move. We also managed to predict a lot of the sets and mons he would actually bring and managed to tech ourselves correctly against those threats. We read the plays well. I don't think anything besides maybe the turn zero play of putting the Curum in first was necessarily bad or non-optimal. GG to Blazing Squid. I'm sure he's going to come back from this one. Please be sure to join me next week when I take on Marolt and the Slovenia Slow Bros, which I'm going to say is going to be an absolute nightmare of a battle. Marolt is a very, very dangerous individual. You cannot tell what he is going to do, and the Mega Banet scares the heck out of me. So, leave a like, a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.